mood lighting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Much better than the light. Okay. All right, we were talking about the idle circuit on Friday. Yes. The idle circuit. Um, all right. So just back up. When throttle is closed, the idle position, very little air flows through. The Venturi doesn't work. So we need an idle circuit. And the throttle is closed. This plate knows pistons, creates low pressure. Yeah, I got that. Um, we use the vacuum to draw stuff out. I talked about this right here. Idle discharge nozzles. Oh, that's right. Idle discharge nozzles. Maybe drill passages. Got it. Okay. Um, talked about some of these uh, drilled passages are above the plate, some are below. What is it when it's below? What is that? Is what it, is it there? Just, is it air? Idle, idle air? The idle, idle air bleed. bleed. Idle bleed yeah. yeah. So then it's an idle air bleed, and then when it's when the when this comes down like that, then this becomes the discharge nozzles. Then it's a discharge nozzle, so they're all discharge nozzles. Okay. Um, so Idle plate, that's where it is. Yes, solid plate is open. More it's holes are exposed. All, Got that. Idle air um, meter. Air meter. All right. Um, idle metering jet. Oh, I got that. Okay, I see where I am now. Uh, idle mixture adjustments. Oh, right there. Idle meter. Okay. <clears throat> so we talked about idle mixture adjustments. Um, I didn't write anything on my notes here for you. So under idle mixture adjustment, I'll just rewrite that. Three idle. Mixture adjustment. Idle mixture adjustment. All right. So what is the mixture adjustment? Used to quickly and easily adjust the idle mixture. Used to quickly. And you should be able to do it quickly and easily. Adjust idle mixture. Didn't you say it was something like you go in to it bottoms out and then a turn and a half? That's only a Stromberg. Only on Stromberg. Okay. Everything else you're going to adjust it to get what? Uh, 25 to 50 RPM. Yep. <clears throat> really about 25 to 50 RPM rise. <clears throat> it's just hard to do that on the Stromberg. Uh, let's see. Idle mix is set. Idle mixture. Is set um, richer than RICH, richer than what? Right, best power. <laughs> richer than best power. What's that? Rich of peak at best power. Well, rich of best peak power. Okay. <laughs> you have the right idea. It's a lot of extra words in there. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> why? Why is it set richer? I mean, because it's such a big deal. I mean, that's by all the books. They all want it that way. Why? Um, Q and A says to keep it cool because not enough air flows around it. Right. One theory is for additional cooling. What about water cooled? Still on that one too. Even it's water cooled. <clears throat> So that chart shows it's like it gets better cooling when you lean it out, right? Not when you go really, really rich. Really rich is cool. I just don't think that's the case. I think that um, one theory is, I think better theory is, is, um, Rotax have jokes, but I'll say um, one theory is that for carbs without the choke, um, rich mixture, rich mixture uh, provides easier starting. And then we talked about the procedure. So for a Stromberg, what did I say for Stromberg? All the way in. Yeah. 
Does it say promotes or prevents the immune starvation? Promotes, P-R-O-M-O-T, oh, that just didn't work out. Promotes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, prevents would not be a good word. You know, they may just want to be really rude to your customer. I know. <clears throat> you don't pay your bill? I just mentioned that. Uh, Stromberg's. Uh, all the way in. Carefully. I would not use a screwdriver. It's slotted, so you can put a screwdriver in there. But if you can use a screwdriver, be super careful. Because it will damage the needle if you screw it in too tight. All the way carefully in. And out. How far? Three, one and a half. One and one half turns. <clears throat> unless what? It runs like shit. Yep, unless it runs like crap, or you feel like sitting there with the running engine and tuning it. Is there an advantage to getting it freaking perfect? It's just for idle, right? Yeah, it's just idle. As long as it starts fine and transitions fine, then no. I, I don't see any advantage to having it rich, extra rich. Um... All other, all other fuel control units. <clears throat> all right, everything else. What do we do? You have to have a fifty percent rise in our in or fifty fifty. Fifty percent, not percent, not percent. No. <laughs> fifty RPM rise. All right. Uh, yeah. Start with. Um, One and a half out. Same thing. Just one and a half out. It's standard. Um, full mixture. And watch for rise. When would I... At what point would I actually go up to anything else and say, well, I got to... Uh, adjust this thing, so I'm just going to start by screwing it all the way in the back one and a half out. Wait, say that again? When, when would I do that? When you replace the carb or rebuild the carb or something? Yeah, that's it. Don't ever don't ever go up to an engine that's been running and, and do that. That's just that's pointless. If you don't touch it, unless you have a reason to, and why would you have a reason to? Because you replace it. You replace it or rebuild it? No, no, no. It's why actually no why would you have a reason to adjust the idle mixture if it runs like crap it's idling crappy or somebody else messed with it no are you different altitudes no. airports no. 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 no rise no rise that's your job right you guys are running airplanes so a customer says hey go this happens all the time i, I want a landing light put in you know go uh Go get my airplane, taxi it back to the shop, and put in the new landing light. So you, you know, walk over there, you get the airplane, you taxi it back around. When you got to shut it off, right? How do you shut it off? Pull the mixture. Off. Off. Pull the mixture. So you pull the mixture, shut it off. What should you do as a mechanic? Make sure you see it rise. What if you don't? Maybe it's a strong and didn't die. <laughs> it's not a strong Make more maintenance for yourself. Make more maintenance for yourself. What, what do you do? Right, right. Inform the customer that you need to adjust that. Inform the customer. Hey, you want me to adjust that? All right. So. No, I did it myself. I know best. So yeah. If they say don't mess with it, don't mess with it. But you know, who's responsible for that? Our operator. So. Yeah. Does that at all also change for environments so like cold environments that might have a little bit more fuel <coughs> mixture? No, not really. Okay. No. You guys see what you're not getting this one here. All right, so I pull the mixture out. I get no rise. Is that good or bad? Bad. And so what do you do to fix it? So I go in and screw it all the way in and back one and a half out? No. No, why are you starting all over again? <laughs> because somebody else could have messed with it. That's that. like if the tire's a little low, do you let all the air out of the tire and then fill it up? <laughs> You just fill it up, right? So if you get no idle rise, then what do you do with the screw? Just turn it yeah. Down, out. 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 Out a little bit. Oh, What happens if you get 150 RPM rise? Too much. Too much. Dial it in. Too much. Screw it in a little bit. All right. Why would it ever change? Suddenly, when you got a plane that's been 
flying for hundreds of hours and now suddenly it's like, well, the carburetor's not adjusted right. Why was it, why do you have this issue? Induction leak. Induction leak. Could be one of two things. One, it's never been set up right before. Probably not, but it wouldn't surprise me. Or it's an induction leak. Where's the number one place for an induction leak on a carburetor? Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, 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 oh. All the valves. Yep. It's, it wears. As it wears out, it's going to run leaner. That's what it's going to do. So as it wears, so what do you do? Act the screw out a little bit. <laughs> oh, you just, right you just, just say fuck it and don't, don't, don't fix that. Though. I would see how bad it is. How many it's things really do we do that with? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you, you're saying that it's not that big of a deal if it's not. No. They're going to wear. They get a little wear out of them. Yeah. Would that be considered like the bushing in the butterfly valve mm -hmm. being worn? Yep, the bushing or the shaft. One or the other. Usually the shaft. Or a little of both. So yeah, it's, it's not that uncommon to see something like that. But just think about that. Whenever you're making an adjustment on anything, it's like, why am I adjusting this? What changed? Because that, that becomes a big deal, especially if you're like adjusting turbochargers, something like that, fuel injection. It's like, mm, why am I doing this? So a shop that sell remain nameless. Um, they asked me if I would like come in if I have time an hour or two a day on the way in and, and just kind of work with some of their new people because they came from other aspects. They're not bad people. They just like worked on jets, you know, transport at, uh, aircraft or military. So they're not familiar with recips. So it's like, hey, could you stop by and just like offer a little bit of training? So stopped the end of the day and we're talking about one thing. He's like, I don't have time right now. You know, this airplane over here, you know, just came out of annuals, got all these problems with it. Um, what's going on, you know? And so he you know, kind of walked me through it. Well, you know, we uh, got a bad mag check. And uh, so they took off, they, they, they ran it up, seemed like it cleared itself out, and then took off and then noticed an RPM drop. So they're wide open throttles on RPM drop. That's not good. So they abandoned the flight, landed, I don't know, came around, landed, whatever, and then, you know, then ran it up, got a bad mag check. So they ran it up real, real hard. Make, pilots see this all the time. So if uh, you think they got a, a clinker, a little bit of uh, lead fouling in the spark plug, I told you this, they'll run it up real hard, lean it out, get everything real hot, and try it again. And, and that'll usually clear out a uh, foul plug with uh, if it's got lead in it. So they did that. Mag check. It was bad. I think they did like three or four more times. And they finally got it to work. And then they were taxing back. Stopped halfway, tried it again. No, nope, did it again. You know, it's like, ah, it keeps doing it, then it doesn't do it. So we brought it back in. And uh, they're troubleshooting it. So I talked to, you know, one of the mechanics. Well, what have you done so far? Well, I thought maybe it was a switch. That's good thinking. So what did you do about that? Well, I disconnected all the P leads and hooked it up to a switch and ran it into the cockpit with just little, you know, flippy switches. Okay, that, that, that's fine. You eliminated the key switch. Those do go bad. How'd it work? Well, it seemed to be fine. Well, it kind of sounds like a key switch. Um, what else do you do? Anything else? Why I tried to adjust the fuel injection unit. Why? <laughs> so, so they often went adjusting the fuel injection unit. And I asked them today, I'm like, well, how'd it go? Did you figure it out? Oh, yeah. And then, then I said, well, if you think it's a mag, I said, it sounds like a mag, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds like a mag. Well, how old are the mags? I don't know. Let's find out. How, how, how many hours can you put on a mag? Five hours. hours. We're probably not recording anything. Maybe. Yep, that's not recording. There it is. It's off that. So yeah. somebody messed with my thing. There we go. Oh, that's going to be loud. Okay. Let's go. go back to there. There we go. Okay. So we're up and running. Uh, nope. Why did I do that? Am I doing it? Yes, we're rolling. So I said, how many hours can you run on a mag? And you said? 500. 500. Oh, they had exceeded that by just double. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So they had 1,100 on one, and I, I don't know about that on the other. So I'm like, well, there's your problem. But, you know, we're troubleshooting, so let's pop the mags off and throw them on the test bench. The what now? <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Oh. So I'd show him how to use test bench. Um, was 
One guy's off messing with the fuel control unit. Yeah, don't. Why are you messing with the fuel control unit when you have a bad mag drop? Does that? It doesn't do anything. No. So, yeah. So wait a minute. So you're telling me that it runs okay on one mag but not the other. Well, that sounds like a carburetor right there. No. All right. So don't don't do that. Um, so don't start messing with things. So anyway, yeah. The bottom line was I called him today. Said how's that going? He said fine. It was the mags. We put some new mags on. The thing runs okay, but now it won't idle because somebody screwed with the fuel control unit. So he's like, as soon as I get time, I will go out there and undo what he did with the fuel control unit. So, all right. So don't mess with the fuel control unit. Okay. So one of the things we haven't really looked at, and we talked about it briefly, as we go through some of the, the features of these carburetors. So that's the basic carburetor we just went through. We went through the the main system and the idle circuit, right? And I hope everybody's kind of up to speed on that one. Uh, let me see here. So I'm kind of going backwards from what I normally do here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. What is this? The difference in air pressure between this and this is called what? Yeah, fuel metering force. Apparently, the difference between the discharge and there is called the fuel metering head. Uh, that's not a term I use very often. All right, mixture controls. Let's see. Um, we'll get to the mixture controls later. Where am I? Let me see. Interesting. Carburetor monkey. Okay. Um, accelerating systems. When a pilot gets excited and jams the throttle forward, there needs to be some mechanism to help transition rapidly from those little idle jets to the main discharge. If you do it nice and easy, it'll take it all on its own. But the problem is, like I said before, if you're coming in for landing, you have it in an idle position. And then something happens where you got to do a go around. It is, it's hard to just go, well, I'm going to do it real slow because something just happened that's not good in your pilot world. So you tend to just jam that throttle forward. And when that butterfly snaps open like that, there's a chance that it's going to run lean, backfire, which is when it usually does it, and then you know, bang, and then uh, then start to go, and well, or or not transition well. You could kill the engine. So you want some method to transition. And as far as I can tell, and all of the the Marvel Shublers or the Strombergs, I don't know about the um, Rotax and stuff. Um, they all have some sort of. So I'll just put all carbs. Um, as far as I know, uh, need some way some way to facilitate rapid throttle openings. And if I'm going to say there's all of them have a system, then I'm going to say there's two types of systems. So two types of systems. What's the one we talked about already? Accelerating well. Accelerating well. So there's the accelerating well. And I think if nothing else, it's just by design that you have two circuits. You have the main circuit and the idle circuit. The main circuit is going to be flooded with fuel all the way to the discharge nozzle when it's not in operation. So all of that fuel, which is normally so all the fuel in the discharge nozzle, plus the fuel that is usually in the um, air bleed, it's all fuel. So right there, that's a well. It doesn't have to be anything more than just what's normally there, but it's full of fuel where normally it's half full of air, or at least more air than fuel. So that works. So it's simply a reservoir of extra fuel 
between the main discharge between the main oops metering jet that's what I meant to write main metering jet somewhere between the main metering jet and discharge nozzle And all that extra fuel is drawn out when you transition over to the main system. So you're going to get the extra fuel whether you like it or not. No matter how slow you open the throttle, you're still going to get that fuel out and get air in, so you're going to get the extra fuel. So extra fuel is drawn out, drawn out when the throttle is opened. And number two is the accelerating pump. And Go ahead. Is there like oh. a, for cars, there's this thing called like a kind of like a pedal commander where it helps uh, throw open the throttle plate faster? We don't want to help them open the throttle faster. If anything, you'd put a restrictor on there, so they wouldn't. We wouldn't do that. Sprint booster. A what? Uh, sprint booster. They, my dad's, my Spell dad's, that first word? Sprint. Oh, sprint booster. S P R I N T. Sprint yeah, booster. Yeah, my dad threw one on his Tacoma to basically open it up a lot faster because he has, um, it's like a, a digital control on like, the throttle plate opening. Oh, it's not connected to an actual. It's not actually connected yet. To your foot, okay. So he wanted something that kind of simulated that. Got it, modern car. All right, so the accelerating pump, and this particular carburetor here is a, it's a rather large one that we're not going to look at in this class. It's the MA4-5. This would be on, I have this on my airplane, so it's uh, 0470s would run this thing. But it's the exact same accelerating pump system that you would find on the smaller carburetor that you're going to be working on. Sure, let's see. Laser pointer. All right, so attach, this is attached to the throttle arm, so it's directly linked to the throttle. So when the pilot pushes forward, this is going to push down. Pilot pulls back, this is going up. That's just all there is to it. So right now, this will be shown in the idle position. Pilot pushes the throttle in, which is faster. It is going to push this down. As it pushes this down, it is going to, the, right here, Is check valve. So right there, these little BBs are going to seat against that, so no fuel can come out this way. It is going to go out this way. There is another check valve in uh, your, the carburetors we're working on that does say discharge check valve. So that is going to push fuel this way, this way, and spray it right out of the carburetor. It is the going atmosphere? to spray, huh? The atmosphere? Oh no, you're talking about the end of the throttle body. You have the throttle body. Okay. It's going to spray it straight up. And straight up, and then like the Lycoming, your guy's carburetor sits on the oil sump, right? It goes The air goes in this way and then out that way. So the fuel goes straight up, hits what? The throttle plate. Wait, I when you open the throttle plate, oh, yeah. pushes the pump, which pushes fuel out. It's going to go straight up. It's going to hit, hit the bottom of the oil sump. Where the, where the air then takes a right-hand turn, but the fuel doesn't take a right-hand turn, so it goes straight up and does what? Piles up up there. It goes straight back down. Okay. Right? Imagine if you had a squirt gun, super soaker, and I spray it right there at the ceiling. Where does the water go? Right back down. <laughs> right back down. So you're saying it's a dumb design. So I'm saying for those people who like to sit in the airplane and pump the throttle a couple times and then hit the starter, it's a great way to make a fire. Because every time you push the throttle open, when the airplane's not running, fuel goes up, hits the top of the intake, comes down, and then goes on the throttle plate and then down into the air box right next to it, soaks up into the uh, air cleaner if it's close enough. So on my airplane, there's a little plenum chamber with a little rubber boot that goes around there. That boot's like a thousand bucks. So I don't want to start that on fire. So don't do that with an airplane with this. 
Now, when you're starting it, you're cranking it. That's how I actually start my airplane. I have a primer. I'll give it one shot of prime and then uh, maybe two and then hit the starter and my hands on the throttle. And if it's cranking a few times, like ah, I need some more fuel, I'll just give it a quick and it sprays it right, right up. And the air is coming through. So the air is going to then pull it into the cylinders and it, you can prime an engine that way. Where are the two balls in there? Where, why, why, what? Why are there two balls in there? They had a deal on balls that day, and so it's two for one. You got to use them. You can't just let them set her. I don't know. <laughs> that I don't know. Uh, all right, and then when you go back to idle, this is going to pull back up. So what's it going to do? Well, there's a check valve here on this side on the discharge so it doesn't draw air in because air would be easier. So as this plunger goes up, this blocks off the air coming in this way so air won't come in there and draws it up through the bottom of the bowl, up into here and fills that back up. So when you push down on the throttle again, this is coming down, whether you like it or not. Now, why is there a spring right there? Well, if it wasn't for that spring, and you can see right there, there's a, like a larger area and then this goes inside of there. If it wasn't for the spring in this right here, then you could only open the throttle as fast as this thing could be pushed down. That would not be good. So this way you can jam on the throttle if you want, and if you jam it fast enough, this area right here is going to collapse into this because there's a spring, so it's going to get shorter. Throttle gets open, and now it's going to push all the way down. The spring's going to expand and inject some fuel. Follow? Yeah. We're looking at that um, the base of the plunger itself, and it looks like it almost is supposed to go down to what would be like the metering jet, or does it not have that much travel? This right here, how much travel does it have? Yeah. I don't know, somewhere in here. Okay, just because it looks like the lower part of that face there. The, like this this like thing the right here? There, yeah. Fits in there? Yeah. Yeah, that's not a metering jet though, that's just a check valve. Okay. So, no fuel is going to come into here unless this is going up. This is made out of leather with a spring inside. They wear out. You have to be nice to them. So that's the accelerating pump. I mean, same thing with this one. This is the same carburetor, just drawn differently. So uh, pull it back. This goes up, draws fuel into the check valve, stored in here. When you open the throttle up, it's going to go through this one, out and around, and inject it up inside there. Got it? Oh, so uh, the thing about these is, I don't know what it is. We're mechanics. You know, I'm not exempt from this myself so i'm going to hand you a carburetor out of the cabinet and what's the first thing you're going to do we all do it no nope. i'm going to hand you a carburetor. Here's a carburetor you're going to grab it and open the throttle up and this look look down in there and open the throttle how many of you did that as soon as kelly gave you the throttle you looked in it open the throttle valve look down through it you know you did it yeah it's like pressing the trigger on a drill and somebody hands you a drill. yeah press the not once but Twice. twice. Yeah, you got to do it twice. Yeah. You got to make sure it works. It didn't work well, there's nothing like an accelerator pump to break you of that habit. <laughs> because when you open the throttle up as fast as you oh, will yeah, normally, right. it'll shoot. At least, it's not, the good ones will shoot a good six, eight feet. And that goes right in your eye. So if you're going to do it, let me know. I want to watch. <laughs> I mean, wear safety glasses. So yeah, it's, uh, a po it's kind of a positive displacement pump, positive displacement, which means the fuel's got to go somewhere. It's not going to go around that little rubber pump that injects fuel through a separate nozzle. <coughs> You can call it a nozzle if you like. It's really just a straw that's got a small hole in the end. Separate nozzle. Let me see. Nozzle, or I said discharge jet, uh, when throttle is opened. Are those more for bigger bigger engines? Or it seems like it would be like blasting a lot more fuel up there. Than the I'm having a hard time remembering which carburetor doesn't use the accelerator. Because you have the MA3 carburetors, the small ones that you'll get next. And so there's MA3A that doesn't have an accelerator and MA3SPA that does. And the MA3 goes on the 150s. 
and up. So that's the O200s. And all the 150s have an accelerator pump. So I don't know which ones wouldn't, which is kind of weird. Uh, I don't believe this. So in my notes, I'm not even going to write it. Because I read it somewhere, but I'm like, I don't know. So if the throttle is open slowly, in my notes I wrote, down that why is this being a pain in the ass? that the fuel if you open it slow and you didn't want that extra fuel right well it would just work its way around here it doesn't though this is a pretty tight leather seal i don't think it with a spring holding it out against the wall so i'm not even going to write that i don't think that fuel seeps around it maybe a little tiny bit but what's that what's the like when it comes up to the accelerator discharge nozzle there's an extra little Here? Y. No, the, yeah, but it comes out to the right. So go down the cursor. Right where it says discharge check valve. The check valve? Yeah, and then there's a yellow that comes up to the right, like a Y valve. Go. Oh, this way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, because how else did you drill that passageway? Oh, that's all. That's what's capped. So, yeah, so whenever you see a weird thing like that in a carburetor, it's because how else would you drill that? I mean, you can't get a drill to come up this way like that. So this is the same way. That would actually come out this way. They drill this all the way through like that, and this one down, and they cap this. They okay, drill this one. Yeah, it's not going to leak overboard. It's oddly detailed. I, in, oddly, but yet not. Yeah. That upper assembly, too, is that like an internal stop to it? No, further up, sorry. Does that have an internal stop to it? This right here? Yes. No. So like in this next slide right here. So this is the same carburetor, but drawn differently. So it's, you can see all the components. That's the economizer valve. Okay. So we'll talk about the economizer valve later. But what it does is it, it uh, closes off an air bleed. So it gets richer or leaner. Okay. So when you go down, that's going to be richer. You want it richer. This is going to roll over here, push that close, stop the air from coming in to this bleed. And it's going to run a little richer, wide open throttles. Uh, what else do I want to do? Yeah. Okay, I'll write that. Can I use this one to prime the engine when starting? No. Well, can be. During starting. You got to have that engine running. If you don't, you're going to create a fire. What do you do if you get an induction fire in an aircraft? You can pray, but while you're praying, what should you do? Keep cranking. If you have an induction, if you have an induction fire on an aircraft, keep cranking. And if the engine, if it's if the engine starts, it'll suck the fire into the engine and then it's out. You can scream and panic, I suppose. <laughs> when I was starting the 310 up. It was, man, that thing is so hard to start. It's just not. It's got. It's got issues. And one of the stu their students are out there watching it. And one of them was the L's, you know. Oh my God, you got a fire! I'm like, oh, shoot, it's just getting ready to start too, man. I was just starting to catch, and so I kept the starter going, trying to start it. Hope, you know, induction fire. Yeah, it wasn't an induction fire. It was a fuel pump spraying fuel in. So that made it worse. So you kind of want to know if. Uh, it's an induction fire for real or a fuel pump spraying fuel. If it's fuel pump spraying fuel, you got to shut down instantly. But otherwise, induction fire, uh, yeah, uh, keep cranking and uh, don't stop. Get that engine started. It'll suck it in. All right, F, economizer system. All right, this can be confusing because, as we talked about, we made a chart and we said, let's see, this is rich, this is lean, this is idle, this is wide open throttle. The carburetor is designed so that it runs reasonably rich at uh, idle. It's going to kind of lean itself out in the 65% power area and then it's gonna go back up to rich. So you have to design a carburetor that does that. So 
if you design, and this is where it gets weird, if you design a carburetor that looked like this in red, and then figured out a way to make it do this at the end, I would call that power enrichment. But if I had a carburetor that was designed like this and had somehow to get this down here so that it went like this and then up, I would call that an economizer. You see the difference? In one of them, you got a flat line. You're trying to figure out how do I make the rich side go up? Rich side go this, this way. Rich side go up. I'm adding more fuel to a carburetor that was otherwise stable. I would call that power. power enrichment. But then if I had one that was working its way towards rich already, but I said, man, some way I got to bring this down here so that it isn't rich in the 65% power, I'd call that an economizer. economizer. That's if they asked me, but nobody asked me. So... An economizer could be a power enrichment, and a power enrichment could be an economizer. They use the word interchangeably. Some carburetors find a way to make more fuel at the end. Some carburetors find ways to cut fuel out in the middle. They may call it an economizer. It may call it a power enrichment. But it's sometimes helpful, I think, if we can all speak at the same terms and say, well, this one acts like an economizer, but this one acts like a power enrichment. And if you can distinguish between the two, and see it, then I think you're, you're doing really well. And if you can't, I still think you're okay, but it'd be nice if you could. All right, so economizer system, or because sometimes they just call it that, AKA also known as power enrichment. Power enrichment. So regardless of the name, regardless of the name, because the end result is, it's gonna look, end result's gonna look like this, right? That's not what I wanted at all. Regardless of the name, something, it enriches the mixture Um, above crew settings. And cruise is about 60 to 70% power. Why do I want it to be enriched at cruise settings? It being the carburetor. Why do I want it richer? Hmm? Their philosophy is You guys are all right. So far, every, every answer has been right. You said? It does run cooler. That's a fact. And you said? Prevents detonation. That's a fact. And you said? Delay the PPP. That's fact. Delaying the PPP, the peak pressure point, uh, keeps us out of the detonation range, helps the engine to run cooler. See? So it kind of just went like that. So all of, the, all of that is exactly true and exactly the reason. So without that... Huh? Oh, what did he say exactly? Yeah, yeah. I know, he said something different. He said the red triangle. Yeah. So that, that danger for triangle. For yep. Yeah. Detonation and cooling. Right? If we go back to. Let's see, one of these beginning slides here. Hey, what was that one? Hey, I, I do that. Um, I want that chart with the lines that I drew. Just have it handy. Jeez. Just all over the place here. Don't look at these yet. Not time for it. Can you remind me what PPP is? Peak pressure point. Can you remind me what peak pressure point is? Yes. There. Start there. Peak pressure point. It is the 
if I was measuring the pressure in the cylinder as it's operating, where does that pressure peak out, right? Because if you think about it, you're going to have intake, which is going to be a vacuum, low pressure, and then you're going to start to see compression. And if the engine wasn't running, then we would just see something that looks just like this, right? You would, it would compress. It would be a curve. It would just be a curve. It wouldn't go or down a negative. Yeah, almost a regular sine wave. So then we'd have, um, yeah, it would just be, so intake would be low, oh, so then it would close off. So intakes, this would be uh, going up, this would be compression. Um, then exhaust, pistons going back down. Um, intake, in, intake, drawing it in, I'm screwing up the chart there, but it would just be a, a sine wave. Right, but it's not a sine wave because when we add the fuel in there, everything changes. So we're going to get this pressure coming up and then a huge spike. I know I have a chart in here somewhere that shows it. It's really good, but I don't remember which PowerPoint I'm in for that one. So how is the peak pressure point? Because it so the peak pressure point is going to be how quickly the fuel flame front expands and the fuel burns. So if that fuel burned really, really slow. I mean, super slow, it actually just follow the piston down if it's slow enough, right? So the piston comes up to compression. It's near compression, you know, a couple degrees, 25 degrees before we get to the top. Light the fuel off, the fuel starts at flame front. This comes up to the top. It's, it's compressed all the way, and the fuel is now really starting to go. Well, it's still, we haven't reached peak pressure point. Piston's going to start going down. As soon as it turns a corner and starts coming down, that fuel is really pushing now. Now it's burning good and it starts pushing down hard on that cylinder. So right there is our peak pressure point. Well, if we, if we sped up the fuel, then as the piston's coming up, it's almost a top dead center, hit the spark plug, peak pressure point, it's going to go back the other way or it's going to detonate because it's, now it's really expanding and the piston starts to compress everything and it's super expandy, whatever. And didn't mean it all technical on either. But, right, so that's bad. So we want to delay that peak pressure point until after the piston goes top dead center and starts working its way down. So the further down it gets, I guess we could say the less chance we're going to have for detonation. So we can also start losing power because I like to think that the, now, the, now the expanding gas is pushing, it's chasing the piston. Hey, come here, i got to push on you. Where are you going? Right? So that's not really helpful. So, but that's why we talk about flame propagation. We talk about speeds. So best power right here, right there, let's see. right here, that's our fastest flame front. And so if we're in this area right here, we're going to have the most pressure pushing down that cylinder, chasing that cylinder. But as we go rich or lean, it slows the burn down and the piston is going to go further from top dead center down. Follow? Yeah, except okay. for you, you're saying it slows the burn down even if you go lean, but that seems to be opposite than what would cause detonation. I think it's speeding up will cause it to lean. Nope, either side is you're safe. Either side could be safe. It's okay. So then why don't we run it over here? Um, I'm going to say number one because remember the fuel numbers. It's like 100, 130. Yeah. So you can. So The octane. You're going to get a better better octane rating number out of a richer mixture. Maybe that's not the best answer to say why we run rich. Uh, yeah. But it is true. Okay. And then the reason why it came over this way was, oh, we were talking about um, economizer. Yeah? Oh, yeah, the red triangle. This one. I was looking for this one. Because I want to make sure we're very clear on the fact that more fuel, more fuel, let me see, this is richer, going this way, more fuel definitely cools things down. Okay, one reason why we don't go lean, my engine will run to about right there. There's no green line for me. I'm over here somewhere. So that's, uh, huh? Yeah, it starts running way too rough. I can't. So I'm I'm gonna be near peak. So you're like on the on the edge of quitting. It just runs really rough. Yeah. Oh, because you 
can't yeah. get lean enough to get the benefits of it. No, I'd say I can't get lean enough to get it cool. It's just, it's just not a good idea. You're, you're losing a lot of power. So do I want to take off and climb right here? No, I, I need to be over here. So if we think about, think about it that way, well, we know peak. Is peak good or bad to, for me full power climbing? Bad. Super hard. Yeah, it's it's uh, well, it's still kind of low cylinder head temp. So why not do it there? Well, I got low brake horsepower. I, I want, I want my brake horsepower, right? So I want my power. I need to climb, especially if I'm trying to clear an obstacle or something. You know, take off from an airport, hang a right, and there's mountains right there, and you got to out climb the mountains. I want some power. Otherwise, you got to start circling or something, right? Well, this is not good power. This is good power. So, all right, so I've got a, two choices. I want my cylinders to run cool, so I can either run it at the green line, which is power right there, or I can run at the blue line or beyond, which is going to put me here. Well, how's my brake horsepower? What if I dump even more fuel in? I'm still pretty good, huh? I got no worries other than, other than the price of fuel. Yeah, well, that's the idea. That's what you want. That's what we're trying to do when we fly the airplane, right? So that's why we don't go lean. It's just things don't work out. Yes, if you go lean enough, you're going to have cooler EGTs, cooler CHT, and yeah, a low amount of power. Not ideal for takeoffs. Got your mother-in-law and her Brock collection with her. And <laughs> All right, it's break time. What percent power do you do that when you take off? 100. 100. 100%. 100%. Yeah, and that's when you have to be like 200. 